G'day viewers, it's Michael here again and welcome back to Single Racer. And now today I want to make a plea, mainly probably to beginner sim racers, but even including myself, if you've ever felt intimidated. And it's based around this car and a brilliant video by Ferrari Man 601 based around a particular hot lap. And I want to discuss it on two or three different levels. And so, as I understand, if you're not interested, I'll have a timestamp in the description that you can skip straight to the hot lap if you want to, or just uh, skip the entire video altogether. It's totally up to you. But let me make it clear that the reason I want to talk about this video is because I felt intimidated, and specifically about this car but the discussion is not about this car. It's about, say, mod cars in general or hot laps that you might see from other very, very advanced driving channels. And maybe you don't want or feel intimidated to try and compete with these amazing channels. And so let me steer this conversation down a narrow road and pun intended <laughs> but um i want to discuss it because i felt intimidated and didn't originally get this car that you see here here which is the um race sim studio formula rss 2000 v10 and the reason i didn't get it initially was because i saw a fantastic video by sim racing 604 but after that video, many people, including Mike S uh, Smith himself, talked about how difficult the car is to drive. And make no mistake, it is a difficult car to drive. But I'm not an F1 driver by nature. It's not my usual um, sort of um, genre to drive. So I felt even more intimidated because could I handle such a, um, a wild car and you know, I wasn't sure whether it was worth getting, even though I really wanted to drive this car. And so that's where I got the idea for this actual discussion piece, because the key thing here is I wanted this car. And after talking to Ferrari Man 601, who naturally, I guess, really recommended the car and I should give it a go, based on the joy I get out of driving classic cars, I, here we are on the Race Sim Studio website. Now, there's no offence to these cars because being RSS cars, they are all brilliant. But just for the record, cars like this V6 here and the hybrid, I just have no interest in. And, and that's just purely because I'm not an F1 driver by nature. But there are certain cars where you go, these are just such good cars. And by the way, this GT pack is still one of the best bunch of cars that I've ever driven, uh, thanks to Sim Racing 604. And if we come down to the bottom here, so here you have another hybrid and the current V6 cars of the modern era, which I, well, I'm just not enjoying either as there's no wish to drive them or watch them on TV, but that's just a personal choice. But this car here, the Formula 79, immediately, it was, it's a, a, um, a shall we say, a non-branded version of the John Player Special, which just had such an iconic memory in my mind being a classic car. So I ended up buying this one as well as the... Um, RSS 2000 V10 because I wanted to drive those cars and that's what I'm talking about the main key thing in the discussion so for any new sim racers out there if you want a particular mod car or for example you want to drive one of the Kunos cars but you don't because you think oh are my skills good enough I can't quite handle it uh, this is where I want to talk about the two aspects uh, bringing them both together. So the first one is, you don't actually, if you're struggling to drive them, you don't actually have to race them. And that was the key I learnt a little while ago. When I watched someone online drive 
any, you know, if you think of any mod car or any Kunos car, but they weren't racing it. They were driving it as though it was a road car. Maybe because their ability didn't allow them to race. So they go, you know what, I'll just drive it for the joy of driving the car. And so now let me give you a visual example of what I mean by how I feel intimidated sometimes, even though you could argue maybe I've got a higher level than a lot of other people. But that doesn't mean I don't feel intimidated. And say, if we take the example of because I still use an older wheel, such a Logitech Driving Force GT, I don't have the control over the clutch. It has no clutch to begin with, but I don't have that finite control when I drive heavily turbo cars. So cars may be like the Ferrari La Ferrari. I struggle to drive on the, especially on the Nordschleifer, because I, I struggle to control them outright. So let me show you here as an example where you can take the intimidation away just by enjoying the drive. And this is on the brilliant LA Canyons by Phoenix 77 just enjoying the car for what it is and not trying to go flat out. Okay folks, so here I am on the LA Canyons in the Ferrari La Ferrari, but I'm really talking about four Ferraris, which is this one, probably the uh, 599, the FXX, and even the F40 that I find very difficult to drive and therefore kind of intimidating especially on the Nordschleifer because um, I either lack a clutch or they're very heavily turboed or usually a combination of the bows. So I tend to avoid them and therefore really don't get to enjoy the cars. And if you throw in mod cars that I might want to drive but feel intimidated about, that adds a whole other layer. But then, thanks to people like Phoenix 77, who develop tracks like this, suddenly if I go, you know what, if I don't try and drive at 110% because everyone else can, and I just say, let's just whack it into gear and let's just drive um, at 80%, 70 to 80%. And then suddenly I can get to enjoy not only this green track, but the car that I might have not touched as well, because I felt intimidated to drive it or didn't quite have the ability to drive it at 100%. And now, providing that, see here I can go fast, but if I slow it down in the corners and just take it reasonably easy, I can still push a little bit. But suddenly I get to enjoy the car on a much higher level and maybe even drive a car that previously I would have totally avoided. So let's now move on to the second aspect of where I felt intimidated and let's see how uh, I can uh, overcome that as far as the intimidation factor. And so now we come to the second part of the intimidation factor, which might be that, okay, you might own a particular mod car like this one, or uh, all the range of Kunos cars. But what happens is you, as a fan of the channel, you watch these channels do these incredible times. I mean, what we classically call alien times. And you go, you know what? I can't even match that. I'm not going to even try. And the point I want to bring up with this car in particular is that I didn't buy it initially because I was intimidated. But now I have it. I go, the joy this car gives me, it's just, it is my favourite F1 car of the cars that are available to me. But it's such a brilliant car that I go, I don't want anyone else to miss out on a car that they might not drive, Kunos or otherwise, because they feel intimidated of what some channels do in their hot at times, so they don't drive it at all. And you go, you, you are just missing out on sheer joy when you could just back it off 
and providing you uh, don't worry about the times that the aliens do can have just as much fun going around a track at three-quarter pace and really getting the most out of these brilliant, brilliant cars. But so now we come to the third part of the intimidation factor, which can be a real, real help. Now, I'm lucky enough that uh, my abilities have improved so much since I started the channel that I don't necessarily have to go around three-quarter pace even including this car here but what I can do is um, so in an F1 car my biggest mistake is I still change gears especially changing down like a road car so it's just it tends to be one change two change three change and if you watch Ferrari Man 601 it's like four changes in a split second and that's how you should drive an F1 car but the great thing about that is that I can study, uh, you know, I often talk about how much I stir Ferrari men and lucky enough he gets the joke, but I, I study his videos so closely to try and learn and that's what's great about if you do feel intimidated is you can go to these alien channels and study how they approach the corners. So let me give you a couple of examples of, so uh, firstly I'll set this up. So this was a hot lap that um, Ferrari Man 601 did on Catalonia, um, which is the old Barcelona moto um, track, I believe. And his goal was to break the 120, but he did lap after lap after lap and just couldn't quite do it and was working on setup and all those things. And then finally, he did it and accomplished it and he, he was so happy about it but I studied that video so carefully to learn tips on how to improve my own driving so that I got better but also that um, if you're a beginner driver you can study these um, and it doesn't have to be an alien channel you can study drivers that sort of a you feel maybe are just a bit above your time and study how they might have improved certain corners or certain ways they take change the gears or if they change the gears and just hold the gear rather than change it down stuff like that so let me break up a little bit with for men's um, permission a couple of pieces that I picked up on how he approaches the lap and how that improved my own hot lap time which I'll do at the end of the video Okay, folks, so here we are in, uh, I'm about to play Ferrari Man 601's 119 uh, hot lap video. And the very clever thing that he did in this video, probably because he was just so wrapped with finally breaking that 120 barrier, was he did a slow motion section of the video of the hot lap, which he's never done before. So if I start this off, there is one key thing that I picked up on that really helped me with this. And what it has to do with is the reason this car is so hard to drive is because it's got so much power in those lower gears that it can just spin you sideways before you can even blink. It's just a fantastic car, but it's controlling that power. So... The hardest part to do this is when you're changing from one direction to another. So if you watch as he approaches this first um, series of uh, S corners, if you look at the, the taco there, we're showing the gear ratio. He goes down to second, but when he has to change direction, rather than rev it out, he changes up to third very quickly, lower in the rev range. And this stops the huge torque from spinning him sideways but where i really picked up on his ability to drive this very very quickly and i recommend that you do the same with other videos of other cars is here he's turning the corner but there's no other corner after this and it's pretty much more a straight line so if you watch second now he doesn't rev it um, or change up early because he feels that he's more in a straight line and can, can control it. Here is the same thing. Now he goes down to first, but 
as he comes out of the corner, he comes into essentially a straight line, so he doesn't change up um, the gears because he feels that he can control it by revving it out. But here we come again to another S. And so if you watch here, he doesn't let it rev all the way, so he changes early, and that stops that kick of the car. But what happens is this is a Jekyll and Hyde car in the sense that once you get up past third, you got so much downforce, incredible downforce in this car holds it to the road. So then you can just um, tend to go faster into the corners and it's trusting the car to hold you down. And it's the Jekyll and the Hyde between the first and second gears. And then from three upwards generally, uh, you can go so flat out. And, um, you know, that's how you learn, or at least how I learned from him, how to do this incredible hot lap or better ways to do the hot lap by studying other drivers. And like I said, they don't have to be alien drivers. They can be drivers that uh, just simply you feel are slightly above your ability and uh, you want to learn from how they take particular tracks or drive particular cars and the tips you can learn and then hopefully you won't in fear you won't feel intimidated the way I did so now the other key aspect to this is for me to have a go at this but not worry that I can't match Ferrari Man 601's time and I think that's the biggest thing that I'm trying to get across by this video as the video fades out here is that um, if I felt intimidated by the fact that I couldn't match his 119 time, I'm never going to race either this car or this track and car combination. And all I'm doing is denying myself the sheer joy that doing this can bring. So if you're in that thing where you don't want to drive the car on a particular track because you feel you can't um, do it as well as someone else then just back it off and just drive it say um, you know don't race it outright at a hundred percent try it at eighty percent and see how you go try and learn to get a bit quicker by studying others and build yourself up to the point where you can maybe then go flat out within your own ability so I really hope that helped uh, someone feel less intimidated the way I did because if I just um, bowed to that intimidation, I wouldn't own this car. And the joy it has given me is just phenomenal. Just such a fantastic car. And I, I don't want to see others miss out. Nothing to do with this car, but just on anything that you feel intimidated by. Whether that be the car, or a hot lap, or a channel. So this is Michael signing out for Single Racer. I'll catch you next time. See you later. And let's go hot lapping.
Okay folks, so let's do a flying lap of Catalonia. As we come down this uh, short back straight here, up to fifth gear, and then briefly back down to fourth to try and get the torque onto this long straight. Beautiful long straight here, all the way up to seventh gear. Flat out down the straight. And learning from Ferrari men, we want to change early, back down to second gear. And then as we change up, we change early to stop that wheel spin, up to fourth time, hang on tight into this bend here, then up to sixth gear, it won't let you get to seventh, and then tight again back down to second, but this time we don't, oh that was bad, this time we don't need to change early, because we're more or less straight as we come out of it, and again, back down to first gear here, but again, no short shifting because it's more or less straighter, if you just be a bit careful. But here you can choose the short shift because this is hard because you're changing direction, direction sorry. Uh, hit the crest here over the apex, that's it, beautiful, all the way up to 7th again, and this is a really hard corner, back down to 2nd here, nice and tight, and you want to put the foot down but she just wants to go like that, briefly up to 3rd, back down, it's such a tight corner, it's so misleading as we come back onto the back straight again or this little portion here up to fifth and then back down to fourth just to get that power out again as we try for a hot lap here on Catalonia, can we do it? Can we beat the time? Yes! Okay, now I'm happy with that time but uh, just because some of you might think well that's a bit unfair because I'm maybe a bit quicker than some of you. I just want to discuss one final thing before I go. So uh, let's go to that now and, and I'll just discuss one last piece of information. Okay viewers, so just before I go, I'd just like to touch on one more thing because I can clearly see the hypocrisy when I talk about racing on RSR or online on the Nordschleifer servers of me often finishing in the top 50 or doing ch channel challenges where I finish in the top 20 or top 10. Saying to beginners, well don't feel intimidated but they can naturally say sure yeah but you finish in the top 20 uh, you know uh, you're a much better driver than I am but the point I want to get across is that I looked for what was my worst um, a result so here it is here the Mazda 787B and I've slipped from about 80th uh, the first time I tried it down here to 147th and when I did my one and only Assetto Corsa Competizione video and that's because I, I don't have a powerful enough computer yet to run it in uh, VR but I finished 1100th in that and that's the key to you not letting intimidation stop you from enjoying these fantastic cars in multiple games is um, because no matter where, to, where you finish you're almost always going to have 10 people behind you and 10 people in front of you unless you're lucky enough to be an alien and so don't let that stop you because if you go oh I'm, I'm going to finish 500th then you miss out on the opportunity of enjoying a really incredible car or track or car and track combination but you're always always going to have someone finishing behind you and no offense to these guys but it's just the way it is um, everyone has a different level and everyone has a different ability so please don't let that stop you from driving these incredible cars even if you only do it at 60 to 80 percent so this is michael signing out for single racer i'll catch you next time see you later